It is the second and final leg of the Texas Two-Step in the Gatorade Cup Series, season number 14, as we head to the Texas World Super Speedway in College Station, Texas, for the Pennzoil 400. This is always one of the crazier racetracks we come to, two miles in length, but races like a two and a half mile super speedway race at Daytona Town. They go with the high banking in these corners, and we'll be seeing some crazy racing throughout the 30 laps here in race number five of the season. Chris Jericho in his Rowdy Energy number 18 has put his Toyota on pole for today's race. Beside him in second, the 43, it's Keyshawn Richardson. Then in third place, we have Riley Sampson. Anderson Reed in the 77 starts in fourth. And to complete the top five, it's Noah Clifton in the double zero. Starting in sixth place, we have Derek Hamill. In seventh, it's Daytona winner, Cole Luigi in the 54. Then it's Jay Randall starting in eighth. In ninth place, we have Justin Zidell. And Laura Chung in the 66 completes the top ten. Back by them, we have Griffin Lynn, the 36, who is outside the 8th of Riley Spurley Tube. Then there's the 38th of Andrew Miller, who is inside TJ Hanley, trying to win at Texas in that number 22 car. Then we have Jordan Stout, the 17, and the 37 of Bibby Ruiz. Then there's Brandon Beal and Eli Bright in the number 88. Then we have Malachi Rodriguez in the 13 of Diego Yepes, with Jeff Bright in car number 9 and the 10 of Ross McMarola. Then we have Max Anderson and Zach Vitor Sr., the only Rick Ware car not to win so far this season. Then we have points leader Jake Gallo and two's outside the 21 of Marshall Burrell. Then we have Farrett Longwell and Levi Shones in car number 4, along with Jose Mills and Conrad Evans in the 95, with John the Buford and the 32 of Ryan Wilson. Then we have Max Rossi and Sebastian Kukulon, Bronson Minnick and Keegan Thompson, Luke Rainey, Evan Hunter, Samet Osgin, Antonin Charbois, and in the final row, Zachary Delo, the 52, and the 40 of Anthony Nunes from Texas rounds out this 42 car field for racing here in College Station. Let's go down tracks with the fire of these Gatorade Cup Series cars up for 30 laps around the Texas World Super Speedway. What a great command to fire the 42 engines here at the Texas World Super Speedway to do battle here in College Station, Texas. A racetrack which has always been unique in the Gatorade Cup Series and you never know what's going to happen here. We've seen races where it's cloudy and overcast and very few lead changes and passes have happened. But we've also seen other races where lots of passing has happened and we've seen massive wrecks further back in the field. So what will be today in the final Gatorade Cup Series Texas World Race? 30 laps to figure it out. Three of the first four races have gone to three different Rick Ware racing drivers. Will the fourth Zachary Fitzroy Sr. win? Will one of the others get their first multiple win of the season? Or will someone new claim the fifth race of the season? On the front roads, Jericho and Richardson to lead to the green flag. Down the front straightaway. Green flag in the air. We're underway from Texas World. Great early jump for Chris Jericho. He gets out in front of the lead. Riley Sampson to his back bumper. Can't do anything with it. Noah Clift has a run with a push from Cole Luigi as they race into turns three and four. Already over 200 miles an hour in the draft. Using the draft and using the high banking of the corners to not have to lift. To lead the first lap, Noah Clift has started fifth. He leads lap number one. Three wide already inside the top five. To the inside, one of Zydell, 22 Hanley. All these others trying to charge up to the front. Three wide on lap two. Justin Zydell moving to second place, trying to chase down Noel Clifton in the double zero. TJ Hanley, the Texan, up now for third in that number 22. Now looking out maybe for second place. Coming behind him, the number 17, Jordan Stout, 13, Yepes, and some of these others as they'll try and shift down to the bottom. The bottom a little bit tight right there with Stout leading it. Yepes also had to lift with the 10 of Ross Marola as they race down the front straightaway side by side. Zydell and Clifton. Clifton led that one. Zydell is the inside preferred lane off to turn number one. And one of the two Texans here, TJ Hanley, trying to get it done in College Station. Trying to win at one of his home tracks here. So they're looking for wide behind. Chris Jericho way up top to the middle for Riley Sampson. They almost make some contact. Great job keeping off each other and keeping it green. Sampson now trying to get down beneath the 17 of Stout, but can't get that done. Zydell leads off turn number four. Riley Sampson now looking low in the 17 of Jordan Stout. Yepes coming with him. Here comes that number 12 of Max Anderson. 15, Derek Campbell. Four, Levi Shones. All moving up nicely in the bottom lane so far. 
Jay Rando trying to get down in line, trying to sweep the Texas races. Won at Texas and just a few, or just last race, and they're looking to win at Texas World to go back to back and sweep the Texas two step. Four wide a little bit further back, and there is some rubbing happening back there. Buford and the number eight and the number 66, and last season's champion Luke Rennie, they're all getting close. Spurs is trying to merge uh, best of that in the number eight. Buford's still over the place, and they're four wide even further back. As 37 Rose gonna try and duck in line by the 32, but it looks like staying to the inside for Ryan Wilson for now, but they'll sort it back to three wide and sell that four wide back down. You definitely don't want four wide here in Texas World. That would be the place that causes the accident. As at the front, TJ Hanley pushing Justin Zidell away. Great lead for the one in the 22. They've gotten away from the three wide for third place. To the inside comes Riley Sampson. Has help from Diggly Pez on the bottom lane as well. So at the moment, those front two have gotten away and they're three wide for most of the, the rows behind. Chris Jericho is down low, but got forced tied by Max Anderson. Now he's trying to use the draft off the cars in front to get back clear of the 12. Looks like he did a great job of doing that to so Jericho, using the draft to his advantage to get up behind the car close in front of him to then get the run down the front straightaway and clear the number 12 and get back down to the bottom lane. Great move by Chris Jericho by doing that. Down the back straightaway. Now third place has gone away. I think that's number 36. It is of Griffin Lynn, past champion. So he's one that could definitely run the front two down. And when you look at the front three, they're all, you know, two champions. And Justin Zidell, obviously a, a longtime veteran of the Gatorade Cup Series and has won a few races. So these front three, they know what to do on the Gatorade Cup Series cars. And right now they're showing it. They're one, two, three in fourth place. Now Aronson Reed, fifth place, Riley Sampson. Four wide looking back here to the inside went Derek Campbell and Max Anderson on Jericho and Clifton. And if they don't sort the four wide out, it could cause an issue. But Jericho with a nice run through the middle. That 18 looking very strong here at Texas World. Trying to get some redemption from his heartbreak at the Texas Motor Speedway just last races. Hanley still staying in second behind Zidell. Lynn and others trying to catch, but Lynn kind of hit a wall of air, not really gaining much. And now Anderson Reed wants third place as the third shoot got stolen from him. Here comes Riley Sampson up to the outside to help. Griffin Lynn out. Yepes going low to try and help Anderson read them. Behind them, Jericho and Anderson. Derek Hamill, along with the 34 minute, they're all trying to break their way further inside the top 10. Jericho got a nice run and will gain now in the four cars in front that are two by two. Lynn trying to get back clear in third and will. Jericho now diving low in the number 13 of Diego Yepes and the number 16 of Riley Sampson. Jericho wants to get back inside the top five after starting on pull here today. Not going to lead the first lap of the race, but now he's back up inside the top five, bringing Max Aronson in the number 12 with him up to sixth. And Jericho might have a run at the 77 in front over 215 miles an hour, off into turns one and two. Fast speed here at Texas World. Griffin Lynn really, now he's starting to kind of suck up to the two cars in front. Before that, he was having a, a looked like a difficult time trying to get to the front two of Zidell and Hanley. Now he's trying to. We'll see if him getting closer to that 22 will help TJ get closer to the one, and then maybe they could try and make a pass on the one of Zidell right here. Lynn trying to get back up behind Hanley, give him a boost forward, and gave him a little bit of a decent shove closer to the one, but can't get him inside of the one. Now Lynn has to fight with the 77 of Aronson Reed for third place. Max Anderson is low on Chris Jericho as well. It's side by side for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth behind the front two of Zidell and Hanley, who have been one two since the first you know, three laps or so. A little bit further back, Max Rossi moving forward in the 20. Stout falling back to his inside comes Cole Luigi. Winner at the other kind of plate track, you know, drafting style race at Daytona. Evan Hunter moving forward, Sebastian Kukulon. Zachary Fitzwater Sr., Ross McMarola, Eli Bright looking inside for Levi Schoen, so that's about for 19th and 20th. Right behind them, Luke Rennie, last season's champion, runs in 21st, the runner-up to the championship in last year's winner, Jay Rando, outside the top 20 currently. So right now, Rando and Luke Rennie, the top two in the championship last season, not having the best of days here so far in Texas World. Andrew Miller trying to come forward, Galway to his outside, our points leader kind of fading back. Galway now to the outside and maybe look into the middle for the number six of Smet Oskin. Jeff Bright trying to move low in the number nine. Brandon Bill a little bit tight down low in the number 14 at the lift and will lose ground to both the 62, 24, and the eight. Move back up towards the front of the field. Hanley shuffled out by Reed and Anderson. Now they're side by side for a second and maybe a fresh face in second place will help try and get by this number one of Justin Zidell as it's Max Anderson in second place. 
trying to get a run from Riley Sampson back behind to get to the one of Zydels. So now it's a new Penske car in second. We'll see if that new Penske car can try and get by the one of Zydels led the most laps so far here today. Come around to 18 laps to go. Aaron has a run right up to the back of Zydel, but so far not taking the run to the inside as they're now three wide for a second. Sampson's trying to stay clear in the 16, and Will, he's clear in third place. Clifton a little bit tight down, lost to lift, and Lynn has a run through the middle. Now Derek Hamill. Great run for Lynn through the middle, up the gut of the 77 and the double zero. She'll be able to get clear in fourth place. Now, or should be fifth place. Now the battle for second. Sampson is low on Max Anderson and wants P2 from the number 12. And now he wants to be the one to run down the number one of Zydell. Sampson now clear in the second position. But now Derek Hamill's a run in number 15. He's trying to look low on the 16 and will get down to the end side. Side by side for second place. And all this is doing is allowing Zydell to keep the lead and keep his tires pretty fresh. Now Anderson Reed looking on Derek Hamill as they race through one and two. Hamill up to second with a nice runoff turn number two and now trying to maybe tuck in and get some draft and then tuck back out. Oh, doing that, that will also help the 16 up top which will keep the 77 beside him and keep side by side behind him which really will help him just focus out his windshield now at the mirrors. Sneaking up to the front, Cole Luigi's looking now three wide on Max Anderson and Griffin Lynn. That was three champions, three wide. Now Luigi wants to go even lower, three wide on the cars in front of him. That would be for fourth place. Can Cole Luigi win his second of the season? How about just a few cars behind him? The one Rick Ware car does not win this season. Zachary Fitzroy Sr. is coming back into it. And number 51, I mean, maybe he could make it all four Rick Ware cars to win in the first five races of the season. Reed for second on Derek Hamill. He'll get to the inside. We're nearing the midpoint of this race. So far, it's been Zydell to dominate. Justin Zydell, car number one, still leading. Halfway, 15 laps down, 15 laps to go. Can anyone catch that number one? And can they find a way around? Yepes looking low, three wide. He gets a little tight down low. That helps Koluigi through the middle, try and get clear down low. Yepes now trying to protect the bottom from Fitzwater and Rossi. The 54 easily cleared through the middle. Grifflin also is getting cleared through the middle. And now Max Ayrson might have a fancy at going on that number 13. But Yepes able to keep the bottom well through three and four and keep that spot for now. Hamill up behind the number one as Idell, but can't find a way to get to the inside quite yet. 14 laps to go here in Texas World. This has kind of been the, the issue with, you know, they've caught the one, but they can't find the run to make it work. Oh, really big moment for Lynn and Luigi back behind. It helped Aronson Reed get clear in the 77 and third and helped Bronson Mick get clear in fourth. Those front four get away. See how the pack at the back has kind of spread out as we've gotten into the green flag run. I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, I, I was about to say, I wouldn't be shocked if a car pit, and it was Ryan Wilson that came down pit road, held up Evans and Hernandez, Keegan Thompson, Charles Bois, Laura Chung, and Delello might even lose the draft. They can see the 47, the 3, the 62, and all these others. They're just hanging on to the draft. Pack up here is still very compact and tight together. Evan Hunter up the middle. To the inside comes Keyshawn for two. Start outside pole, but is faded back here at the end of this race. Max Rush is trying to move up on Fitzwater, who has help from Levi Shones. There's Bibby Ruiz and Luke Rennie moving forward. Riley Sampson fading back into the number 16. As at the front, it's a few pairs of cars with the 1, the 15, the 77, the 34, then you have the 54, 36, and 13. Now Fitzwater is clear of the 16. Now's a run using the draft in front to get clear of the number 20 and try and run down, run down the front few. Anderson Reed wants second from Derek Hamill, but Hamill looking like he's going to get down low and just keep that second spot for now. 12 laps to go in the Penzo 400. So far, Justin Zaydel's at the majority of the laps in that number one, but will someone have a late race pass for the win? Cole Luigi could be the one. Number 54 has been flying through the field. He's now up for fourth place and will get by in fourth place. Can Cole Luigi get it done for winning the 500, the opener of the season? Can he get the fifth race of the season as well? 11 laps to go. Reed with the run. He's going to take it to the inside. That is for P2 on Derek Hamill. Can he make it stick on the bottom lane? Zydell able to hold for now. Anderson Reed, great rotation down low. Gets in front of the 15. Hamill gains a little back using the draft off the one, but Reed should have it in three and four. That's going to be second place for the 77. Great run for Aronson Reed. Now Cole Luigi wants third and will take it from Derek Hamill. He's been the car to make the most moves in this race and not really stumble because of them. Griffin Lynn trying to make his own move, but the 54 is trapped from the 77 and should get clear in third. Now Yepes will look down low three wide, trying to block off Fitzwater and make the advance himself. 
Lin got tight, went up the racetrack. He's trying to use all the momentum he can get. Luigi gains big on Aaron Smith for one and two. Coming around to nine to go. Luigi's going to have to make this move for a second because he can be the one to battle the number one of Zydell. Code Luigi up to P2 now. Can he be the one to dethrone Justin Zydell? Read back to third. Lin now fourth. Fifth place is Yepes. Three wide for sixth. Hamill up top. Fitzwater in the middle. Down low, it's Riley Sampson. Luigi with the run. Zydell trying to protect down low to turn one. Just nine laps to go. Griffin up to P3. Get by that number 77. 13, Yepes is moving low. Fitzwater also coming to the front. TJ Hanley coming back in the 22. He's looking down low on his teammates. Now it's three cars at the front. Zydell, Luigi, and Lynn. Can Lynn stay with Code because he has a slight runoff. Turn number four. Code Luigi to the inside of the one of Zydell. Eight laps to go, and our 500 champion is now going for the lead at Texas World. Three wide for fourth place. Derek Hamill, though, on Fitzwater and Yepes gets tight. Fitzwater's going to be a nice position again. Nice run. The three cars in front still stalling each other out. Great run for Fitzwater down the back straight away. Cole Luigi leads. Now he gets drafted to the one as Zydell to keep those two behind side by side. Luigi leads in a three and four. Griffin Lynn up to second. The man who's dominating here today. Zydell is outside the top three now in the number one. And now Lynn has a run at Luigi. Fitzwater has a run at Lynn. And Sam has a run at Fitzwater. Three wide for the lead in a turn one. Zach Fitzwater Sr. to the inside. He wants the top spot. And Fitzwater drives in deep and he takes the lead away from Cole Luigi. Now if he slides up, Luigi has a nice run coming off turn two. He might sh shoot under right here. That's exactly what happened. Call Luigi low on Fitzwater. Griffin Linda third. He dives low to break off the advance of Riley Sampson. Now Call Luigi is back clear. Three wide for a second. That's going to help the 54 out. Here comes Levi Jones moving to the end of the number four. Six laps to go. TJ Hanley moving low. Max Erickson moving four wide. On Ruiz and Yepes. It's all kicking off here at Texas World. The man on top of that four wide is the man who's dominated. Just as I tell. Can they sort the four wide out? It looks like they're going to try. Ruiz can move back behind Yepes. Can they sort this out? This bout for a second. Can they sort it out to run down this number 54 of Cole Luigi, who's looked to have a really good car in the second half of this race? Can Riley Sampson be the one to rally the troops to try and get up there? Sampson trying to get clear, but Lynn still fighting tough on the top side. Now Yepes looking low on Levi Shones. Has up from Bibi Rose as well. If Yepes gets tight, that's going to be a good run for Shones and Zydell. But the one's still washing up. The Dirty Air not helping the one at all. Shones a nice run. Trying to get clear. Lynn with a crossover move on the 16 of Sampson. Once again, only hurting their cause to try and run down Cole Luigi. And the more they go side by side, the more Cole Luigi loving it. Yepes tight. Now Zydell's clear. The inside not working for that number 13. Really big momentum loss right there. Lynn, first second trying to clear. Four laps to go. To the inside, three wide comes the one of Zydell. Justin Zydell trying to get back up there. Dominate this race. Lost it, but he's not out of it yet, but got really tight there. Levi Schultz can be third. Now can Lynn get to Cole Luigi and get by him? It's two, three champions at the front of the field. Cole Luigi from season five. From season six, Griffin Lynn. And from season nine, Levi Shones, they're one, two, three, and the pencil four to come back to three laps to go. Samson has a nice run at Shones, the four really tight through three and four. Lynn has a nice run at Cole Luigi. There it is, three laps to go, six miles left. The battle for third, Samson low on Shones. And what can Lynn do with Cole Luigi through one and two? Samson a little tight, the four gets some draft. This could be a really good run for him off the corner. They're four wide behind as well. They're trying to sort that, they do. Jones is clear in third. He's trying to help Lynn get up to Cole Luigi. At the front, it's three Fords, three Blue Ovals leading the way. Back around, two laps to go. Cole Luigi, Griffin, then Levi Schoen. Schoen's with the run will take it for second place. Can he complete it? If he doesn't complete it, Cole Luigi is looking set to try and win this race. If he can't complete it, it could be Schoen's versus Luigi. The one went with the 36 to give him a nice run right here. Down the back straightaway, nice push for Griffin. Lynn should get him back clear in second place. And he might have just this one last lap to run down Cole Luigi. Through three and four. Our Daytona 500 champion, Cole Luigi, will take the white flag. He has two miles, one lap left to win the Pennsylvania Texas World. 
Can Lynn Jones or someone else run him down? Off into one and two. Cole Luigi better. The Dirty are really hurting the 36. Really tight for Lynn. And now it's going to be over. It's about for a second. Down the back straightaway for the final time. Lynn can't complete the pass for a second. It's going to be side by side for a second. Meanwhile, by five, six, seven car lengths out in front, Cole Luigi will be the first driver to win multiple races in the final Gatorade Cup Series season. He takes the win at Texas World. A major battle for second place behind. It is Cole Luigi from 500 victory lane to now Texas World. He's the first driver to win multiple races this season. And Rick, we're racing. Four for five to start out this season. The only race they did not win was Michigan race number two. One effort for this team this season. Cole Luigi, second win of the season. Let's go see the finish results. Now the points look after race number five. Here's how they finished in the Penzo 400 at the Texas World Super Speedway. No caution flags here today. Two lead changes among three different drivers, and it was out front at the right time for the number 54 of Cole Luigi as he claims victory here at Texas World, leading the final eight laps and really only won this race after making that bold bonsai move down to the bottom to get back by his teammate Zachary Fitzroy Sr. Luigi wins his second race of the season. Griffin Lynn, a fellow champion, ends up in second place. So close yet so far to getting it done. Riley Sampson right where he started. Third place for him. Levi Schultz in fourth. And B.B. Ruiz runs at the top five in the 37. Very consistent start to the season for Ruiz. Diego Yapez, sixth place. Justin Zidell dominated in 20 of the 30 laps. But seventh place is the best for the number one here today. Derek Hemmel in eighth. Aronson Reed, ninth. And Max Rossi rounds at the top ten in the number 20. Fitzwater had a shot at the end. Eleventh place for number 51. Minnick, Anderson, Rainey, and Clifton the top 15. They have Stout, Eli Bright, Hanley, Richardson, and Hunter the top 20. We look down, Osgin and Rando just outside the top 20. Chris Jericho from Poole never got the lead lap, but fell back to 26 at the end. The 18 car just struggled once he got put back in traffic. We look down some of these others, and a lot of them had lost some of the draft after the number 32 of Ryan Wilson had to pit like you saw uh, behind the uh, number 8 of Spurly Tube, the number 96, 41, 48, 66, and 95 all lost draft. And even Conrad Evans lost a lap as he had to come down parallel as well in the 95 along with the 32 of Ryan Wilson. Let's now go see the points. Here are the point standings after race number five in this final Gatorade Cup Series season. Jake Galway still maintains the points lead by five over Jay Rando is now up to second, right where he finished the points last season. Noah Clifton is now third in points. Riley Sampson fourth and Cole Luigi is second win of the season. Moves him back up inside the top five in points. You have your peasant sixth, Ruiz in seventh, Richardson Burrell and Levi Schoens round up the top ten in the points. Luke Rainey, last season's champion right now, 11th in points. We get the second wild card spot. The first would go to Zachary DeLovo, who is 16th in points right now with his victory at Denver. And you look down some of the Hendrick teammates, Hernandez and Eli Bright moving up nicely here. TJ Hanley now 17th, Anderson Reed, Max Anderson, Zach Fitzroy Sr. Now inside the top 20 in the number 51. And the one non-Rick Ware car to win this season, Sebastian Kukulon, winner at Michigan, down 32nd in points. And out of the running for the wild card as it stands, because he needs to be top 20 in points to use it for the wild card. Just outside the top 20, Lynn and Miller, the teammates, Oskin and Minnick, Miller and Lynn's other teammate, Rossi Stout, Jericho, Rodriguez, Thompson, and Beal all just outside the top 20 and inside the top 30. Some of the bigger names that are outside the top 30, like Evan Hunter in 35th, Jeff Wright 36th, Spurly Tube 37th, Buford in 38th, Mills Charlebois also down here, and then Laura Chung, Ross McMarola also down towards the bottom of the points. So five races into the final Gatorade Cup Series season and another crazy racetrack yet to come on the Gatorade Cup Series schedule. We go racing at the Hillside International Speedway for the Exalta 400. I'll see you guys then.